Float on down. We're going deep into the sewers to dig up all the Easter eggs and references you might have missed in IT Chapter 2. Now is your last chance to turn back, because there are plenty of spoilers and scares ahead. Stephen King's stories are often connected to their New England locations, as well as their monsters. It takes place in Derry, Maine, and the book often references the nearby town of Castle Rock, where multiple works by King are set, including his novella The Body and its movie adaptation Stand By Me. These two stories are also connected through their focus on friendship, childhood trauma, and the end of innocence as groups of kids are forced to confront dark forces around them, both supernatural and human. At the end of Stand By Me, Gordy Lachance is finishing the last lines of his memoir, inspired by the news of his childhood best friend's death. His office has dark wood paneling and a wall of books around him, as well as a picture window looking out onto the front yard. In IT Chapter 2, Bill's office is a replica of Gordy's, albeit with a sleek laptop rather than a clunky 1980s home computer. And like in Stand By Me, Bill is working on his own book about childhood. 1986's Stand By Me was the film that gave Stephen King a reputation for more than his horror stories. It also helped catapult young actors River Phoenix, Will Wheaton, Corey Feldman, and Jerry O'Connell to stardom in film and television. Phoenix's promising career was sadly cut short in its prime when he died of an overdose in 1993. In IT Chapter 2, the film adaptation of Bill's horror novel is being held by Peter Bogdanovich, who directed River Phoenix in one of his final films, The Thing Called Love. As it turns out, cinema legend Bogdanovich is actually a friend of IT director Andy Muschietti and asked for the cameo personally. The connection to Stand By Me and River Phoenix is the poetry of coincidence, but still brings a melancholy touch to IT Chapter 2 for fans who remember him fondly. In Stephen King's epic gunslinger fantasy series The Dark Tower, roses have a special significance. Their appearance often indicates a nearby portal to parallel universes, and certain roses are powerful enough to enchant and heal with their mystical properties. One in particular, known simply as The Rose, is found in an abandoned lot in New York City at the corner of 2nd and 46th Street. Rose symbolism appears frequently in King's works, including It. In It Chapter 2, Bill finds his old bike silver at the vintage shop's secondhand rose, which is a sly reference to things that were once beautiful and important but are now merely taking up shelf space in a small-town store. In the book, the store has the full name Secondhand Rose, Secondhand Clothes, and Bill buys his Schwinn for $20. In Chapter 2, the proprietor, played by Stephen King himself, charges Bill $300. When the older losers go back to the house on Nebalt Street in Chapter 2, a 1950s-era Amana fridge that was first seen in Chapter 1 makes another appearance. Inside the fridge, they find Stanley's decapitated head, along with a host of other nastiness. In the novel It, that bridge played heavily in a number of disturbing scenes that have never made it to the screen due to their graphic nature. Most notably, the fridge in the junkyard is where Pennywise victim and school bully Patrick Hockstetter would trap animals and wait for them to suffocate to death. It's also the site where Patrick met his untimely end in a swarm of flying leeches. Mother. In IT Chapter 2, the civic pride expressed by the phrase, I Heart Dairy, takes a sinister turn. In Chapter 1, the message can be seen printed on one of Pennywise's red balloons, a reference to a horrific hate crime in the book that hadn't been put to screen until Chapter 2. After winning an I Heart Dairy cap at the Canal Days Carnival, Adrian Mellon and his boyfriend begin walking home, talking about their future. On the way, they are set upon by a group of homophobic bullies who viciously beat the couple, throwing Adrian's body over the bridge and into the speeding current below, where Pennywise proceeds to eat him. King based Adrian Mellon's storyline on a real-life hate crime that played out exactly as he wrote it, minus the cannibal clown, at least. IT Chapter 2 is the first adaptation to put these horrifying events on screen, putting the previous I Heart Dairy reference into its proper context. In every IT adaptation, and as per the book, the local cinema plays a huge part in the loser's story. During the summer, it's a safe space for kids to escape from Henry Bowers and his gang of bullies. It's also the place where many of Pennywise's tormenting monsters take shape for the losers, like Richie's Wolfman. But in IT Chapter 2, the movie theater is boarded up and closed down, with only movie posters to indicate when the shuttering happened. We get a closer look when Richie visits the place during his search for a token, and one of the posters is 1998's Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan rom-com You've Got Mail, which implies that the theater closed its doors sometime before the turn of the century. But more ominously, there are two rips in the poster that spell out a scraggly IT. Turns out that's a sneaky bit of foreshadowing, since Richie is about to have his own run-in with Pennywise. Beep, beep, Richie. 
In the novel, the Bradley Gang were a group of gangsters who made Derry a pit stop during Prohibition. One day, in a strange series of events that points to Pennywise's evil machinations, the Bradley Gang were massacred by town folk in one fell swoop. The event went down as historic legend, and both IT Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 feature a mural in Derry commemorating the gruesome event. What Chapter 2 adds to the story is that Ben actually found the Bradley Gang's bunker and reinforced it so the losers could use it as a hideout from Henry Bowers and the other bullies. This is why Ben finds a bunch of rusted old padlocks and chains down there. The Bradley Gang had already made this a secure hiding spot, and the hole was waiting in the woods for the losers to find and adopt as their own. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.